vibrant and generous, let me say. That's when we talk about our Barbera d'Alba. Barbera d'Alba is a wine denomination is uh, made absolutely with 100% Barbera grapes. Our vineyards are located in two main villages, part of Barolo district. And I'm always very proud to mention them. Uh, one is uh, Monforte d'Alba and the other one is Novello. The key over there is absolutely the elevation. And imagine you know, the eels in the region, uh, the vineyards located at the top of them, so where the wind is blowing quite often and being able to create a really special microclimate. The main characteristic of Barbera is uh, this high elevation of, um, of acidity and we always try to make it milder. We don't have any, any secret. As I was saying, the location is so fundamental and absolutely the composition of the soil. We tend to, to pick the grapes uh, really at the end of September, beginning of October, in order to achieve the best ripeness. At the end, this uh, uh, ripeness uh, is absolutely moved into the wine. Let me say something about 2017 vintage. As, uh, I'm sure you associate uh, 2017 with so much heat. Uh, don't forget that Barbera loves so much heat, sunshine, um, high temperature. And the fact that the two vineyards are, are located at the top of the hill, being able to get this uh, breeze uh, along the day and also during the nights, so we were able to achieve the best ripeness uh, right in time. So normally I'm talking about the end of September, beginning of October. So at the end, this is the resulting wine. As you can see, I mean, the color is so deep, but there is so much concentration. But the wine at the end is so elegant, so, so balanced. Um, in order to mild the acidity, because it's not a, a type of wine, I mean, uh, disturbing your palate, but it's really teasing and simply teasing your palate. It's so vibrant, so generous, so alive. Our Barbera is a pure emotion, you will see. As soon as you're going to have a chance to have uh, this wine, you will decide whether to enjoy it alone or maybe to invite your best friends. Enjoy it. Our Val Maggiore Nebbiolo d'Alba, let me say, is the Nebbiolo in Roero. Roero is located on the left bank of the Tunnel River. And there have always been two important and historical sites for Roero, Val Maggiore and Occhetti. Val Maggiore has an important meaning, literally means major valley. Val, valley, maggiore, major. Our plot of three hectares is a beautiful amphitheater, facing the south with full exposure to the sun. Here, nature is rich and vigorous, and the ground is soft and sandy, and the slopes are extremely, extremely steep. The sandy soil gives an uh, extremely specific characteristic and unique uh, expression into this wine, as you can see from the color. The sandy soil makes uh, this wine so unique and so special. The only thing uh, I fear to say is that do not make the assumption when you enjoy a Warra Maggiore to enjoy a Barolo wine. Uh, we are in a completely different area with a completely different type of soil and so microclimate and consequently the wine is so unique. The nose of this wine is so particular and so special. Reminds you the little berries from the woods. I'm talking about the little strawberries, the little raspberries and uh, I don't know how familiar you are with the pomegranate but once, once you have the little grains from this fruit recalls precisely this wine, the freshness of acidity. We normally age this wine one year in barrels and we, when we talk about barrels we talk about tonneau of 500 liters, always from second, third year, never new oak, uh, in order to help the, the fruit to announce and never to have this uh, uh, sensation of oak overwhelming too much of the finesse of this wine. Enjoy it! 
Alessia Barolo is uh, one of the two Barolo wines that we make and is always been so close to our hearts uh, for a very particular reason. Uh, was the first vineyard my dad bought in 1977 and consequently the first wine that he made in 1978. Canubi Boskis. Canubi is the name of the hill site which is located in the village of Brolo, in the heart of Brolo village. Boskis is uh, one of the four little uh, sub-regions componing this majestic hill. The lower elevation the particular composition of soil, clay, limestone, with some layers of sandy soil, and so the particular microclimate over there, all together make this wine so special and so unique. In 1999, my dad was able also to start making Barolo Levigne. He was able to acquire a couple of vineyards because in his mind it's always been the tradition in making Barolo, the final blend. Blending several plots together in order to achieve more complexity at the end into the final wine. Le Vigne means the vineyards. And with this name we really wanted to give precisely the meaning of that, bringing uh, different expressions Different, uh, different flavors, uh, different expressions, brings together complexity into the glass. The Bosque's vineyard in Canubi hillside always meant so much to my dad. At the point that in 2013, vintage, this wine has been dedicated to the new family generation, to my two kids, Alessia and Stefano. If you combine the two nicknames of the two kids, you get the word Aleste, Ale and Ste, together. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you uh, two very special vintages from the region, 2014 and 2015. Different to each other because of the weather condition, but the end so particular. 2015 characterized by heat, but don't be afraid when I say that, as we are talking about Lange, we are talking about Barolo district, with a very particular type of soil, clay limestone, so being able to retain and to release when it's time. And also because we have the chain of mountains very close to the region, being able to cool down the temperature when it's necessary. In 2015, we had a heat wave during the summer, and uh, honestly, we got a little bit worried, but we have never seen our grapes uh, going to a watery stress. For the reason that I told you before, because of the composition of the soil. So the soil was uh, full of humidity from the rain we got uh, uh, the prior vintage, 2014, and then the end, being able to release it step by step. So at the end, we were able to achieve the the ripeness during the harvest in the most relaxed way and pretty much in time. Talking about uh, Aleste, which is located in Brolo and the elevation is uh, relatively low, uh, first week of October. Talking about Levigne, which is a nice blend of uh, four different vineyards and four really different villages higher in terms of elevation, so mid of October, end of October. 2014, I know, uh, it's always uh, quite tough anyway for a winemaker to talk about 2014 because of the many words spent on this vintage. But let me say that I'm so proud of finally to be able to talk to you all about what happened in the region, but mostly at the winery in 2014. The weather was uh, pretty much abnormal, or very unusual, let me say. Uh, so much rain, so much rain during the springtime, so much rain during the, um, the summer, something that we are not really used to. But in the end, let me say that we, fi we all finally understood that the Nebbiolo loves cold weather and that's precisely the characteristic of 2014. Luckily the weather improved around the third week of September 
and my uncle Luca, who actually doesn't like uh, giving up, he decided to start sampling all the vineyards of Nebbiolo and he saw day by day that the grapes were simply improving the ripeness. So the weather improved in terms of humidity, so less rain, and slightly in terms of temperature, so slightly warmer. In the end, we were almost the last winery harvesting Nebbiolo grapes. We got extremely lucky as uh, there were so many people available and willing to come to help us. So we were able to go in the vineyards and to do a very meticulous selection, to throw away all the berries overripe, let's say in this way, in order to give time and room to the one a little bit behind. In the end, we were able to go through the harvest in Canui Boschis for our Aleste Barolo, uh, pretty much in time, it was the first week of October. And talking about Le Vigne, around the third week of October. So we finish our harvest on October 22nd, extremely pleased and proud. And now I'm so happy to take you to the most special place, which is the cellar, where we age all our wines. Right now we have uh, all our babies aging, getting ready for you all. We have so many vintages, great vintages, 2018, 2018, 2017. Uh, 16 is already in bottom, and today I'm so happy to taste with you all two or also other special vintages, 14 and 15. Now we are in the library, and I have to talk softly as we have all our babies uh, sleeping, resting, aging. This is a very special project uh, to my family and to the wines. We wanted to give a, a specific name to this project, uh, CB et Pauches. Maybe it's a little bit difficult to pronounce. This is Latin. CB means something done for myself. Pouch is uh, for my favorite. It's a very tough sentence. Think about uh, the meaning of, uh, of doing something for uh, this incredible wine. Everything started in, in far 1994 when we choose to put aside part of our production of Nebbiolo wines. I'm talking about our Val Maggiore, our Barolo Livigne, Barolo Canui Boschis, and soon Aleste. Those bottles do a longer aging. 10 years Barolo, 6 years Val Maggiore. Our seal, seabed pouches, printed on the label, identify specifically these bottles, and so of course, at their path, which began a long time ago under the ground of our cellars.